So you've gotten the test results and set up engineering controls. Next, you'll want to remove the wet or previously wet building materials. The goal is to go down to the structural layer and remove all layers of materials like drywall and insulation that could be trapping moisture. When you do this, you'll be removing any mold that is growing into the wet building materials and expose the structural components that will remain so that you can effectively remove any mold and bacteria from the structure itself. Mold has roots called hyphae that grow into porous and semi-porous building materials. Because most homes are framed out of wood, which is semi-porous, we have to use an abrasive methodology to remove the mold and its roots from the wood framing that will remain. Personally, my favorite way to do this is to use hydrogen peroxide to help bring everything to the surface, then by using a HEPA vacuum with a bristle brush attachment, brushing and vacuuming simultaneously helps remove these particles efficiently. Other methods include sanding or wire brushing or even more mechanical abrasive methodologies like dry ice blasting. Keep in mind, the more force and pressure, the further these spores can travel into other areas outside the containment, especially if that force is greater than the pressure from the air machines used to control the airflow. Once mold is removed from the structure, there will likely be mold spores and hyphal fragments left behind. At this point, it's good to use a botanical disinfectant, particularly one with a surfactant, to help remove these particles from the area. Lightly spray down the area you have just removed the mold from and wipe the area down using microfiber towels. These particles are too small to see, which makes this part challenging. A good rule of thumb is to keep cleaning the area until the microfiber towels are free from dust, debris, and residue, looking like they just came out of the packaging after the area was wiped clean. Next, it's time to decide about using an antimicrobial based paint to seal the area. It has benefits, like turning a semi-porous wood surface into a non-porous surface, making it more resilient for mold to grow back. There are great low toxic options that can be of value, especially in spaces like attics or basements that are prone to humidity. In conjunction with the dehumidifier where necessary, this paint can help act as a preventative action and many of them come with a warranty preventing mold growth as long as there is not a new active leak. If you decide to use an encapsulant, it's important that you follow the manufacturer's directions and ensure that it is fully covered and evenly applied. These products do not work as intended if they are applied incorrectly. There's one last word of caution. Never apply the paint over wet building materials. If the lumber is still wet, either from active water damage or the application of the antimicrobial products, it can cause the mixture of chemicals and sediments to create hazardous off-gassing. In addition, it can also seal the wet building material and prevent it from truly drying, also leading to a potential of off-gassing. Always make sure the space is fully dry before applying the paint. Last but not least, make sure to use the right paint. Interior paints are meant for interior walls. Be sure to use a real antimicrobial coating meant for the type of material you are painting. If you are removing mold from a basement or crawl space with concrete walls, you may want to consider a paint-based product that is semi-permeable and helps slow down the vapor diffusion that occurs in subgrade spaces that introduces elevated moisture. These products are typically called water blocking primers and you also want to make sure you're following the manufacturer's recommendations. While these products are not designed to stop running water, they can help slow down moisture intrusion so that you can control the space with a dehumidifier. Dehumidifiers are key in areas like basements and crawl spaces and even in your living areas in certain climates. Again, keeping humidity below 60% is key in preventing mold growth due to humidity. Once you've repeated these above steps in the mold removal process, you will finally need to clean the HVAC in the home. Do not skip out on this important step or the particles that have been produced by these sources will remain in the indoor living environment, continuing to circulate around the home and opportunistically get inside the body. Check out my ERMI video for more information on how that works and how you can test after a remediation to make sure the cleaning is working. You're one step closer to creating a healthy home. Health begins at home.